SpaceX Starlink satellites burn up every day. Why? I'm glad you asked. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me. I don't have tea, but hopefully you do. Maybe a cup of coffee as we hang out talking about tech, space, SpaceX, Starlink, and of course some AI and Linux. Today we're going to be talking about SpaceX Starlink and their satellites. I've been reading a lot of articles about this gloom and doom about the satellites burning up in the atmosphere and they're going to cause some type of environmental issue and it's like I don't even know. Anyways, I want to get into this a little bit with you today and give you the truth behind it. So you don't have to listen to the nonsense out there and you can kind of weed through what is fact and what is fiction. So today we're going to be talking about these satellites burning up. How many satellites are burning up on orbit every single day? And the answer right now is anywhere between one to two satellites. It's kind of a lot, right? Every single day, at least two, let's call it. That number is going to slowly progress as there is more and more SpaceX Starlink satellites up there. So as of right now, there's about 8,500 satellites in LEO. And as that number increases, the number that burn up will also increase. That's just simply the math. That's how it works. So I'm going to go through a couple of these articles. I threw them together for you so you get an idea of what's going on. And then, of course, I'll give you my commentary and kind of break it down a little bit and give you the why. Because you know this channel's always been about the why. <laughs> <laughs> so if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want to give back to the channel, there's a little thanks button right down there. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video's still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink goodness, there's about 570 videos I made just for you. I'll put a link right here. Don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, click there. Check them out. A lot of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course, the why behind all of it. Because as I always say, what? The channel is about the, not the what, the why. And not the how, the why. <laughs> so one last thing. If you haven't went over to my website yet, check it out. Go to jcristina.com forward slash shop jchristina.com forward slash shop. There's a bunch of merch over there, like this shirt that I'm wearing right now with Megabit on it, our mascot. Um, check them out. If there's something there you like, pick it up, help support me and my family. That would be awesome. So the article starts out by saying, Starlink satellites are falling, but here's why it doesn't matter. You may have seen the headlines, quote, Starlink vaporizes satellites daily. Sounds catastrophic, right? Two satellites falling from Earth's orbit every single day. But the truth is far less dramatic. These aren't uncontrolled crashes or explosions. They are part of the plan. Elon Musk's grand plan, to be exact. Designed to burn. Every SpaceX Starlink satellite is built for what the engineers call, quote, designed for demise. When it reaches the end of its service life or suffers a malfunction, SpaceX commands it to lower its orbit. Within weeks, atmospheric drag takes over and the satellite disintegrates completely in the upper atmosphere. Nothing hits the ground. These are clean, controlled disposal, not debris events. Why so many are falling? With over 8,000 Starlink satellites currently in orbit, losing one or two a day is statistically normal. Think about it like light bulbs at a stadium. When you have thousands running 24-7, some will burn up every week. SpaceX launches new batches constantly, roughly 24 to 28 satellites per Falcon 9 launch, with multiple missions almost every week. The system was designed to refresh itself continuously. That is absolutely the case. There's been the last maybe three or four launches. I think there was like 23 and 24. And I think we've seen a launch with 28 SpaceX Starlink satellites. And I think they did like three or four of them recently. So you're talking about a lot of renewal. Maybe we'll do a little bit of math at the end of this to see exactly what the disparity between the amount of loss and how many are actually being put up there, if it really makes any much of a difference. It continues. No impact on launch cadence. Does losing a few satellites a day change SpaceX's launch schedule? 
Not at all. The cadence is already aggressive, more than 200 launches per year, and each Falcon 9 adds dozens of replacements. Even if two satellites deorbit daily, that's about 60 a month. Those satellites are replaced in just a few launches. The math simply doesn't move the needle. The real story, efficiency and scale. The takeaway here isn't destruction, it's scale. SpaceX Starlink is now the largest satellite constellation ever built, growing faster than any network in history. Losing satellites at this rate actually proves how sustainable the system is. It shows that the self-cleaning orbit concept SpaceX promised is working. Satellites fail, fall, burn, and are replaced all in a closed loop. The burning up story is just the visible part of a massive ongoing machine that is rewriting how global internet infrastructure works. That is absolutely the case. So we've been seeing a bunch of articles about this and we've been hearing about these environmentalists saying it's gonna somehow destroy the ozone layer because these few satellites are burning up in orbit. And then some people are saying, well, these satellites are gonna fall on people's head, you know, the chicken little thing. And it's like if you ever watched a starship launch and you see how the starship comes through the atmosphere and the pouring off of plasma is happening and the melting of the stainless steel is happening, anyone with half a sense would be able to very easily calculate that these things are not going to make it to Earth. It's just not possible. They are going to melt. There will be nothing left of them besides dust. That is it. And as they were stating in this article, which is 100% factual, they're actually made to burn up. They use specific materials that are easier to burn up in the atmosphere. So, like I said, we need to do a little bit of math here. And if we were, let's say, reducing the number of satellites by two satellites every single day, that means, or maybe one to two, that would be about 30 to 60 satellites lost every single month. But if we're launching on average, let's say 25 Starlink satellites, and there's probably about maybe 16 launches or so per month, you're looking at about 400 satellites every single month. So you lose 30 to 60 and you're putting 400 up. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, the math doesn't make any sense. You know, what these people are talking about, once again, it's the chicken little people out there. It is statistically irrelevant, absolutely irrelevant. The other thing that people have concerned with is that these satellites would somehow stay up there in orbit in perpetuity or something. And like they were talking about in this article, that is absolutely not the case. And just to kind of push that a little bit further and make it a little bit more clear so you understand, there is different locations in the atmosphere that provide different amounts of drag. Some locations provide atmospheric drag. Some locations are only providing gravitational pull. Sometimes a little bit of a solar push or a lunar pull. But for the most part, it's going to be gravitational. And it has to do with the location that they are in space. So anything that's sitting about 150 to 400 kilometers, that's where these satellites are. They're around 320 kilometers in space. So anything between 150, let's say to 400 kilometers, they are experiencing extreme amounts of atmospheric drag. Not as much of the gravitational pull, that's not nearly as much as that atmospheric drag that they are being inundated with. Now, what does this mean? What that means is that those locations between that 150 and 400 kilometers, any satellite that is there that does not have an onboard propulsion system is going to be sucked back to Earth and burn up in our atmosphere in very short order. And that's why they're there. They are placed there on purpose. Could they've been put into a higher orbit, like in the past, geo-orbits, way up at like 36,000 kilometers? Absolutely, absolutely. But by SpaceX placing these satellites at 320 kilometers, they are basically able to allow them to renew and refresh themselves and burn up and put themselves into the incinerator, let's say, every X number of years. Now, how many years is that? 
With the onboard propulsion system and the amount of propellant that they have, they will sit in LEO for about five to seven years. Now this isn't always the case, and the reason being is there's other things that are constantly affecting these satellites. And what are they? Well, solar winds are a major part of it. And another thing that is the biggest part that a lot of people don't talk about is the collision avoidance system that they have on board. Now, I've talked about this in the past, and the SpaceX Starlink satellites, there's right now about 8,500 that are currently in orbit. Out of those, about 10% are actively performing collision avoidance every single day. So about, let's call it 800 times, there is a satellite that is moving from location to location to avoid crap on orbit. Trash, debris, or maybe other satellites, whatever the case might be. But it is having to use the propulsion system to move. Once again, collision avoidance. That is the bigger story here. Because as there's more and more junk in orbit, and as there's more and more countries launching satellites in orbit and not doing what SpaceX is doing and placing them in specific locations for X amount of time with X amount of propellant so that they can then slowly move back into the atmosphere and burn up, once again, a self-recycling system, some of these people are putting them where they shouldn't be or they are being destroyed or they're leaving them there after end of life or EOL when they're not working anymore and not pushing them, nudging them back into the atmosphere to once again clean Leo. This happening will greatly reduce the amount of lifespan for these satellites. Once again, as there's more and more debris and more and more of these collision avoidance have to happen, this means there is less and less propellant because the propellant is being used just simply to move around continuously instead of just simply keeping them at the altitude that they need to remain without being sucked back into the atmosphere. Are you following that? So as time goes by, I think we're going to see more and more of this. So as of right now, we're seeing one to two SpaceX Starlink satellites being sucked into orbit per day that are burning up. I think that's going to move into doubling to about four, maybe even eight to possibly 10 per day as time goes on. That's just simply the math. That's just how it's going to work. Number one, there's going to be more satellites on orbit, so there's going to be more that are going to need to be replaced. But the other thing is there's going to be more debris on orbit, which will cause those collision avoidance systems to constantly use the propellant. And there's a finite amount of propellant on every single satellite. And when there's no more left, that's the end of it. They can no longer stay there and they will be sucked back into the atmosphere and they will burn up on re-entry. So that's kind of the skinny behind what is going on. I think it's fascinating and I just wanted to make it clear so people understand what is happening. There's a lot of people out there that have this chicken little mental that for some reason they believe like satellites are just going to fall from the sky and hit them on the head. It just doesn't really work that way because once again, those satellites are made to destruct. Those satellites are made out of material that will melt as they're coming into the atmosphere. That's just simply it. Even the materials that we see on the flaps of the Starship are melting with the plasma of thousands and thousands of degrees Fahrenheit pouring over them. Can you imagine a very dainty, a very lightweight type of satellite? Those things are just going to disintegrate. There will be nothing left but dust, trust me. So what do you think about all this? Down below, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you're shy, you don't want to write something down there, please put an emoji. So at least I know that you got to the end of the video. I would appreciate that. Anyways, many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.